Delhi's air quality index remained in the poor category with stubble burning adding to the city's PM2.5 load which doubled to 22% on Saturday from 11% on Friday according to data from the government. Delhi's AQI on Saturday was recorded at 287 in the poor category according to the CPCB's 4 pm bulletin with PM10 being the prime pollutant. The Met department also added that though wind speed was around 12 km per hour during the day, pollution levels remained poor because of stubble fumes from neighboring states and high local pollution. The capital has already implemented the Graded Action Response Plan from the 15th of October, under which several polluting factories in the Wazirpur industrial area have been shut down. The Noida administration on Saturday said it has issued penalties worth 11,15,000 on various private contractors and entities for flouting anti-air pollution guidelines and rules in the city. Action has been taken as per the guidelines of the Graded Response Action Plan or GRAP, which came into force on Thursday amid worsening air quality in Delhi NCR. Four contractors were issued fines by the water department, totaling up to 4 lakh rupees for laying pipelines in violation of rules, while 14 others were issued fines totaling 3.5 lakh rupees for violating guidelines of the National Green Tribunal. India reported 61,871 new COVID-19 cases and 1,033 deaths in the last 24 hours as per government data. Total cases now stand at 74,94,552, down by 341 from Friday. Active cases have also come down by 2,335 and now stand at 7,83,311. The number of cured patients stands at 65,97,210, up by 1,700. 98 since Friday. Deaths have however gone up by about 196. Total deaths in India now stand at 1,14,031. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre on Saturday said gymnasiums and fitness centres in the state will be allowed to reopen from the Shara, which falls on the 25th of October. During a virtual meeting with the representatives of gyms and fitness centres, the Chief Minister said group activities like Zumba and Yoga and steam and sauna facilities will not be allowed. Thakre said the state government was going slow on lifting COVID-19 restrictions because there should be no complacency. The second cut-off list for admission to undergraduate courses at Delhi University was released on Saturday and they continue to be very high, remaining above 97-99% to in several colleges. But seats got filled fast despite the sky-high cut-offs at major colleges. Nearly 30,000 of the total 70,000 seats in the Central University have already been claimed. The second cut-off for economics at SRCC and LSR capped at 99% for both, while KMC and Hansraj capped admission for BCom honours at 98.5%. Ramjas College said the cut-off for economics at 98.25%, for English at 97.25% and for political science at 98.75%. Hindu College also set the cutoff for economics at 98.75% while it closed admissions to English, Hindi and political science subjects. Admissions for the second list will be held from October 19th to October 21. As the world continues to develop an effective vaccine for COVID-19, the government on Saturday said two pan-India studies on the genome of the virus in India suggest it is genetically stable and has shown no major mutation. There had been concerns in some quarters that any major mutation detected in the novel coronavirus could hinder the development of an effective vaccine. However, some recent global studies have said that vaccines currently being developed for COVID-19 should not be affected by recent mutations. Mutation typically refers to the proper of a virus to undergo changes when it multiplies and the virus may develop some new strains after it replicates. In cases, the new strains tend to be less effective and therefore die out soon, while more powerful strains may lead to faster spread of the virus. The government also said that the Indian Council of Medical Research was conducting large-scale sequencing of nationally representative strains collected over a few months and detailed results on mutations of the virus will be available in early October. India's drug controller has given a go-ahead to Dr. Reddy's laboratories and Russian direct investment fund for the Phase 2 and 3 human clinical trial of Russia's Sputnik V COVID vaccine in India. The Hyderabad-based drug maker said in a press release that this will be a multi-center and randomized controlled study, which will include a safety and immunogenicity study. 
Earlier in September, Dr. Reddy's and RDIF entered into a partnership to conduct clinical trials of Sputnik V vaccine and its distribution in India. As part of the partnership, RDIF shall supply 100 million doses of the vaccine to Dr. Reddy's upon regulatory approval in India. Contact with frozen food packaging contaminated by living new coronavirus could cause infection, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention said in a statement on Saturday. The statement came after the CDC detected and isolated the living coronavirus on the outer packaging of a frozen cod. China had in September this year suspended frozen food imports from 19 countries where staff members were diagnosed with COVID-19. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's personal website data has allegedly been leaked on the dark web. According to reports, the leaked data is said to include names, email addresses and mobile numbers. Cybersecurity firm Cybel claimed that it was tipped off on October 10 about the databases of Prime Minister's personal website narendramodi.in being available on the dark web. The latest development comes just over a month after PM Modi's personal website's Twitter account was hacked. On the orders of a local court, Mumbai police on Saturday registered an FIR against actor Kangana Ranaut and her sister Rangoli Chandel for allegedly promoting enmity between different communities and other charges. The Bandra Metropolitan Magistrates Court had ordered the police to investigate a complaint filed by a Bollywood casting director and fitness trainer which referred to Ranaut's and her sister's tweets and other statements. On the directions of the court, Bandra police registered a first information report for promoting enmity between different groups on grounds of religion, race and deliberate acts hurting religious sentiments and sedition.